chapter 5, verses 10 and 11. Praise God. The one who believes in the Son of God has this testimony with him. The one who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony God has given about his son. This is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. This is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. And this life is found in His Son. Thank you so much. Let's worship the Lord one more time. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, O oh God. Thank you for the eternal life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Praise God. Thank you so much. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sharing your testimony with others is a must for all Christians. When giving your testimony, you will tell how you come to trust in Jesus alone as your Lord and Savior. You tell how God, you tell how God opened your eyes on how you were a sinner and you need a Savior. We are sharing with others different events leading up to our salvation and how God has worked in our lives to bring us to repentance. Church, testimony is a form of praise and honor to Christ. I know that each one of us has a testimony. And that testimony is to praise and to honor the Lord Jesus Christ. We also use it as a way to encourage others. Know every time when you're going through trials and sufferings in life, that's an opportunity to share a testimony of how God worked in your life and made you stronger. Testimony is not only the things that we say, but rather the way we live our life. It is a testimony to unbelievers. Amen. I remember we had a neighbor way back home in the Philippines. We had a neighbor who used to go to other apostolic church and sometimes he go with us in our church. One day he was furious and holding his 45 caliber. Try to imagine. Apostolic Christian holding his 45 caliber. Then he shot his gun three times. Bang, bang, bang. And he said, You are lucky that I'm a Christian. Well, it's so confusing. All our neighbors were confused. And I remember him at the back of his car, there's a sticker on it. And it says, Powered by Jesus. And the way he drive along the street, it's recklessly. <laughs> it seems he's telling that the way he drive, because Jesus gives him the power. Again, it's so confusing. As a warning, testimony is not about lies and exaggeration. Amen. When we give our testimony, it's not lies and exaggeration. 
So must be careful. We must be careful as well that we don't brag and glorify ourselves. Which is what some people purposely and unknowingly do. Instead of talking about Jesus, they use it as an opportunity to talk about themselves, which is no testimony at all. That's why every preacher must preach about Jesus and not self. Amen. It's not about us, but it's about Jesus. Amen. What is your testimony? What is your testimony? What is the testimony of the church? John chapter, chapter 9 verse 11 says, This is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. And this life is found in His Son. This life is only found in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is my testimony. This is the church testimony that we found eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. Wherever we go, we have this testimony that God gave us life, that God gave us that one of a kind of opportunity because we cannot find this opportunity from, any, from this world or from, from no one. Amen. This opportunity only comes from the Lord. And it is a gift from God. And it is free. Amen. One quote that I, that I read says, Your story is the key that can unlock someone else's prison. Your story is the key that can unlock someone else's prison. Last year during Momentum, a Momentum Conference, I was able to meet a, a, a newcomer from the Philippines, and he's a pastor. And as I recall, he told me that he misses Philippines, particular the church where he pioneered and pastored for 16 years. After that, we met, uh, we met again last year during the Filipino conference. And again, he told me that he misses so much Philippines, and particular the church. And he told me that he wants to go home. He wants to go home. And what I did is, I told him my own testimony. And I said, Pastor, I know what you feel because I've been there before. I cried a lot. No, Pastor knows about this. He knows. I cried a lot. If a pastor for 16 years pioneered and pastor for 16 years, I pioneered and pastor for 23 years. So I, I told him, I know what you feel. I know what is in your heart. But you know what? I told him, I'm not the only one who cried. Even my kids, my son and my daughter, they cried also because they miss the church. The church and the daughter church, wherein they are, uh, 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 they have their uh, uh, personal uh, attachment uh, for the church because uh, because of their involvement. So I told him, I'm I'm not alone, even my kids. And after that, I prayed for him. And this year, January, we met again during the Memo uh, uh, Momentum Conference. And we met again together with his wife. And his wife was so grateful. 
she told me, Pastor, thank you so much for giving your testimony and encouragement for my husband. Now, he is determined to stay in Canada. And he's getting his own license under United Pentecostal Church Canada. Amen. So, your story is the key that can untold or can unlock someone's else prison. Amen. Psalm 71, verses 15 to 18 says, My mouth will tell of your righteous act, of your deeds of salvation all the day, for their numbers past my knowledge. With the mighty deeds of the Lord God, I will come, I will remind them of your righteousness, yours alone. O God, from my youth you have taught me, and I still proclaim your wondrous deeds. So even to old age and gray hairs, O God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to another generation, your power to all those to come. What the psalmist saying is, he will testify about the goodness of God. And he's ready to become God's witness. And if he looks behind he can still remember what the Lord has done into his life. And even though he will turn into maturity or old age, he's saying that he's still willing to testify about the goodness of God. I just want to tell this to all our elderly I know some of you has been limited by arthritis or some, I don't know, sign of old age, as we should say, we are limited when it comes, when our, uh, mobi our uh, mobility has been limited. I want to say this. Just keep on moving for the glory of God. If it is your last strength, use it to testify about the goodness of God. And if it is your last life, last breath, tonight, use it for the glory of God. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for giving us this testimony. Thank you for giving us eternal life. Amen. Hallelujah. You know what I mean? Young people, you have the strength like a young lion. If our elderly brethren has the limitation when it comes to mobility, because of their old age, young people, you have the enough strength to move and act more just for the glory of God. Amen. I, I felt so happy and encouraged if I saw an elderly person Although they were, they were limited, they are limited. If they can raise their hands and just move a little. Because they can't move a lot. They're limited. But I'm still impressed. I know within their heart, amen, they're giving the testimony that God, amen, give something very important to their life. How much more to the young people? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. If it is your last strength, use it for testimony. Praise God. If it is your last breath, 
use it to praise God. Psalms 35 verse 28, Then my tongue shall tell of your righteousness and of your praise all day long. Amen. Amen. And let us use your suffering or our suffering as an opportunity to give testimony. Amen. Praise God. Philippians 1, verse 12 to 14. I want you to know, brethren, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. So that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak in the word without fear. Inside the prison, Apostle Paul considered that as an opportunity to testify about Jesus. What I'm telling is, uh, if any one of us experiencing any form of suffering or hardship or trials, please, I just want to tell you this. Your suffering is not your final destiny. That is not your final destination. Your suffering can still be used. Your suffering is an opportunity to give your testimony. Amen. And I want to keep you telling you this. If you're on suffering, don't put yourself on the box. And telling God, Lord, look at me. I'm weak and sick. I'm nothing. Please, church, you have a testimony from God. Don't put yourself inside the box. Go out and praise and magnify the Lord. And let the people know your testimony. Let them know that you found God in your life. Hallelujah. Only God can turn mess into a message. That's what the code says. Test into a testimony, a trial into a triumph, a victim, victim into a victory. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you suffered, amen, still you have the testimony. Amen. Why? Because God has the power to turn it into a message. Why? I can say this. Because I experience it. I know. Amen. Your suffering and my suffering, He can turn it into a message. What kind of message? That God is really good. That God answered that prayer. That God can heal. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He can turn it into a message. He can turn it into a testimony and triumph. Praise God. Praise God. The reason why I can't, I can't remove God in my mind. The reason why I can't go far without God. Because it is in my mind. It is in my heart. Amen. I can still remember what the Lord has done in my life and in my family. And I can still see it. Amen. And I can still feel it. And I can still have it. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I have that testimony. I had the triumph. Why? Why? Because He is the God of hope. Amen. Amen. Now, if you are suffering by your own mess or other people's mess. Don't be sad because God is the God of hope and second chance. 
Amen. God will give you a second chance. Amen. Rise up. Rise up. God will give you another opportunity. God will give you another chance to testify about the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Your testimony is your authority. Your testimony is your testimony. Just recently, now, every preacher, uh, every uh, pastor's kids, they really don't want to be used as an illustration by their, by their pa parents. <laughs> I, rem I remember my kids, they keep on saying to me, Pa, please, stop, stop. Stop using us, please. But they can't do about it. No. <laughs> Praise God. Just recently, my daughter told us about uh, their conversation in uh, travel and tourism class. They're talking about different religions because that's their assignment. Re uh, have uh, their research about uh, religions. And one of her classmates has a lot of uh, curiosity about all kinds of religions. And until she heard about the Holy Ghost. She heard about the Holy Ghost. She's not participating. But when she heard the Holy Ghost, because she heard Holy Ghost, oh, they said the Holy Ghost. They're saying about Holy Ghost but there's no authority because they don't know about Holy Ghost. All she heard about Holy Ghost is, I don't know if it is real. But when she heard about Holy Ghost, she said, oh, Holy Ghost? About Holy Ghost, it is the Spirit of God. And everyone who received that, they speak in other tongues. They speak in another language. And they ask him, oh, really? How come? How come that, you know, that kind of stuff? Do you experience that? Yes, I experienced that. And my family. See? Your testimony is your authority. We have, we have this authority in this world. Amen. We have the word for this world. We have the Holy Ghost for this world. Amen. Praise God. The world is innocent while we are informed, well informed, and has the experience. Amen. There, there is a time, there is a chance that the world will ask you about God. Amen. And you have the authority. They will ask you about prayer. They will ask you, will you please pray for me? You can do it because you have the authority. Because you have the testimony. Amen. They will ask for some personal advice because of their problems, then you can give advice because you have the word, you have the authority. Amen. Let's continue to live this testimony because it is our authority. Keep your testimony at all costs. Keep your testimony at all cost. It's been a long time that I deal a person one-on-one -on, -one on his walk with God. As I recall, as I remember, he, is, he was a drug addict he is a drunkard and a womanizer. 
One day, he surrendered his life. He surrendered his weapon and drugs. Literally, he handed it on my hand. The weapon and the drugs. The drug known as Shabu in the Philippines. Meth. He handed it into my hand. And I disposed it immediately. I was scared. If police came and the shabu is in my hand. <laughs> and tomorrow there's a headline. Headline, pastor caught in the act with shabu. <laughs> and weapon. I dispose it. Dispose meaning I dispose. I didn't use it. I dispose it. <laughs> and if you ask how, how I dispose it, well, at that time, at that time, uh, uh, our brother, uh, he's making uh, smoke uh, for the uh, mango tree. Uh, the Filipino use that... Uh, uh, to, uh, to smoke the tree so that the tree can uh, uh, bring uh, fruits. So, I put the shabu on that. <laughs> <laughs> and during the season, the mango bear more fruits. <laughs> it's true. It's not a lie. It's a testimony. And not, it's not an exaggeration. It's true. And after, after, I, after, after I did that, I just make fun approaching to my wife because she knows that I'm holding, the, I'm holding the, the drug. I'm walking like this. <laughs> and I told her, Hi. You're my trip. Well, go back to this person. He was a drug addict, drunkard, womanizer. He surrendered his life to God, and he told me, Pastor, I'm surrendering, I'm surrendering this weapon and this drug because I'm done. I'm done. I want to focus on God. I want to focus on God. And then he asked me about doctrinal issues. And I taught him about one God, Holy Ghost, etc., about doctrinal issues. And he asked me about fasting. And I fasted with him. It's a one on one. And he asked about overnight prayer meeting. Or overnight prayer, and I pray with him. And he, he is a street vendor. That's a kind of his job. He's a street vendor, selling food along the streets. So I gave him trucks. I told him, okay, while, while you're on the street selling your Thing, your stuff, you can give trucks and you can share the word of God. And you know what? Through him, through this person, I got two home Bible studies. Two home Bible studies. As to continue, one Tuesday morning, I received a text message. And the text message was, this person 
was in prison. He was in prison. I was saddened at that time. I'm asking why he was in prison. On the same day, I went to the, to the prison house, to the jail, to visit him, to find out what happened. And this is what I found out. The last night, his neighbor invited him to drink. And he gave in. And he was drunk. After all, this good testimony, he gave in into a certain temptation and he was drowned. And the worst thing is, he was caught in the act in someone's house trying to get some things inside the house as a thief. So that's the reason why he was put in the jail. You know what? Every time I, I remember that story, I always felt devastated. I told this guy, I told him, you know what? Comparing yourself to other members of the church, I felt being a pastor through you. So devastating. He has four kids, so little. And with that kind of situation. But still, I help him. I ask the police chief. Told the police chief, sir, can you give him a chance? I will give you the guarantee. Can you give him a chance to get out? Well, the police chief gave him the chance. But I gave him the guarantee. Sir, I told him, sir, if this person will do it again, I'll be the one who will put him into jail. I was just sad because he was not able to keep his testimony. Church, we need to keep our testimony at all cost. At all cost. We need this. We need that. This is a gift from God. This is freely given by God to us in all cost. In any form of suffering, keep your testimony. In sickness, even in that bed, keep your testimony. Even to the last breath, keep your testimony. I remember my mom. Her last days. Every night before she sleep, I always hear her voice. She's praying and speaking in other tongues. Even to the last breath, she's praying and speaking in other tongues. Up to the last breath, she keep her testimony that God did something great into her life. Amen. Can we keep the testimony? Church, there's a lot of opportunity ahead of us and we can have it if we keep this testimony.
There's a lot of souls. There's a lot of souls, Pastor. And they will be able to come here if we keep our testimony. Because we have the Word. We have the Holy Ghost. Amen. You are the authority. Shall we all stand? Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10, 11. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of His Christ have come. For the accuser of our brother has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. And they have conquered Him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word by the word of their testimony, for they love not their loves even unto them. We have the word of this testimony, and we will overcome, we will conquer this accuser. Church, Thank God, He always give us the chance to encounter Him at this altar. At this altar, we always get the testimony from God. And tonight, let's have it in our mind, in our heart, that upon this altar, I will receive Another testimony. Another testimony that will enable me to testify unto this world that there is a living God. Amen. Why don't we come at this altar and let's have another encounter with God? Why don't we witness the power of God? Hallelujah. Lord, we're here to experience another testimony in our life. God, empower your people. 